GM, um, I wanted to make this uh, this video because we're getting our uh, our contracts audited. As you can see here on Code Arena, it's going to start very soon. So uh, yeah, I wanted to do a quick overview of uh, of what's in scope for this audit, uh, which which will hopefully be helpful for uh, uh, for some of you who are, who are going to audit this code. Okay, so first of all, uh, which is important to know, so for, for some context, uh, that is stablecoin. We are already in production. Uh, we have some TVL already. So it's a running system. Um, and this is basically, so this audit is going to be for our kerosene feature, which is basically, basically a V2. So again, uh, the diet stablecoin exists already. We have some vaults uh, and all of that stuff already in production. Uh, but this is an update in order to introduce our new kerosene, uh, kerosene feature. Okay, um, so let's talk about, uh, about the diet system um, from a high level point of view. Maybe the architecture would be helpful as well. So we have Dyad, which is the ERC20 stablecoin. And we have a vault manager, which aggregates over several vaults. So in the current system in V1, we have, uh, we have uh, staked ETH and we have ETH as collateral. And you can add and remove collateral positions uh, uh, in your in inside the vault manager, so you have an add and remove function, which basically allows you to add and remove uh, collateral positions, right? Uh, another very uh, very important thing about Diad is that everything goes through a DNFT or a Diad NFT. Which is basically, which basically means, in order to interact with the Diet ecosystem, you need to hold that uh, that NFT, and obviously that contract is uh, is uh, is already deployed as well. So if we look at, let's get the let's get the address, and this is the the NFT contract. And if we read that and get the total supply, we're already at 645. And this is not going to change. The DNFT contract stays the same thing. OK. Um, so what is going to change for this, uh, for this upgrade? And what is in scope for this, uh, for this code arena audit? Several things. So we have a new vault manager, which we call vault manager v2. We have uh, new kerosene vaults. Okay, so the the unbounded and the bounded are both uh, kerosene vaults, or so they're inherited from uh, from this contract. And bounded basically means if you put in kerosene, you cannot withdraw it anymore. Unbounded is you can deposit and withdraw. Then we have a kerosene manager, which, which I'm going to explain in a little bit, a kerosene denominator, and uh, enter the deployment script. Um, let's go back to the, to the architecture. So, okay. So we have here the, the kerosene vault, the unbounded and the bounded. And again, the, the main difference between the, uh, between the unbounded and the bounded is that the unbounded can we can be withdrawn as well and the bounded can only be deposited but uh, but is is has basically has doubled the price of unbounded kerosene that's the that's the special thing and we have a kerosene manager which actually let's let's just look at the implementation okay so Let's look at the kerosene manager. Okay, so the kerosene manager has is uh, is owned, will be owned by the Diane Multisig for now, and it basically allows you allows us to to add vaults 
which are gonna be which are gonna be included in the in the in the TVL calculation of the kerosene price. So a very important thing about kerosene, let's switch back to the let's switch back to the outline. Um, the price of kerosene is determined is deterministic. Okay, so inside inside the uh, inside the unbounded function we have this asset price. And this asset price is again is deterministic, which means it's it's not determined by the market. It's it's determined by by this function, and it's basically um, it's basically this um, this equation this this equation here, which is basically the TVL minus the diet uh, diet supply divided by the kerosene supply. Um, it's not exactly the whole kerosene that supply. That's why we have the, the kerosene denominator uh, contract, which I'm going to go through in a, in a little bit. So in order to determine the TVL, um, we have the kerosene manager because we couldn't just take all the vaults in the diet ecosystem, which would include the, the kerosene vault itself. So we didn't want the kerosene vaults to its, uh, themselves to be included in the TVL calculation. So that's why we have the kerosene manager, which basically the kerosene manager uh, gives us all the vaults that are going to be uh, that are going to be considered in the CVL calculation. And very important script, which I think gives you a very very good overview, is the deployment script. So in the deployment script, we have two vaults: the east vault and the and the stake east vault, and we we add both to the kerosene manager. Okay, so only these two vaults for now are gonna be determined, uh, are go are, are gonna be considered when we uh, when we calculate this TVL. Okay, um, then we have we subtract the diet total supply. Uh, nothing fancy there, and we divide by the by the kerosene supply. Okay. And here we get the kerosene, uh, the kerosene supply we get from the kerosene denominator because the kerosene denominator, and this is a little bit awkward um, how we do this, but uh, it works for now, is the denominator is the kerosene total supply minus the kerosene which is in the, is in the multisig. And most of the kerosene, kerosene for now is in the multisig, but we, what, uh, but we're gonna distribute this, distribute this over time. So if we look at the mainnet owner, let's take a look. Um, let's take a, take a look at the multisig, and most of the most of the kerosene here is. In this multisig for now, it's uh, so one billion. Uh, it's uh, yeah, it's uh, most of the supply is in the multisig uh, for now. Okay, um, so this is why we have this denominator function. But if we go back, this kerosene denominator can be upgraded or changed in the future. So if we move all the kerosene out of the multisig, for example, we we can we can upgrade uh, this ad address, um, which is may uh, maybe also a good place to look at for for potential exploits. Like what would happen if? Yeah, I don't know. Like I'm I'm not super happy with this implementation. So I think. This is a good this is a good thing to to look at in in detail and maybe find find a more more stable way to do this. All right. Um, okay. So this is the unbounded kerosene vault, which inherits from the kerosene vault, which we can look at here. It is basically like the vaults that we have we have already. Uh, already audited and deployed uh, with 
some minor changes like the we have the currency manager right we have um, the asset price which is uh, which is gonna be overridden uh, by the actual implementation so we have the unbounded here and then let's look at the bounded which basically has the special thing of it's it's not withdrawable and the asset price is double that of unbounded which is okay if you if you put kerosene and it's bounded it's uh, it accounts for double the price okay so we looked at uh, kerosene, the vault kerosene bounded and the, and the unbounded. We looked at the kerosene manager. Let's look at the let's look at the new vault manager. So vault manager v2. Okay, so how the vault manager works is we have normal vaults and we have kerosene vaults, which are stored in these in these mappings, and u int is always the DNFT ID. So we have uh, DNFT has a has a set of uh, has a set of vaults and has a set of kerosene vaults, and uh, I think this is the latest feature. Okay, um, and uh, one major difference between the old vault and the new vault is uh, is that we have a flash loan protection that we we needed to add it. Uh, need to add because of uh, of the way flash loans could uh, could mani manipulate the kerosene price. So we have ID to block of last deposit, which we set when we deposit, and then when we withdraw, we check if it's the same block. We we reverse. Okay. Th then we have uh, basically two two functions for adding vaults: one for adding uh, normal vaults, and one for adding kerosene vaults. And the same for removing uh, removing them. Okay. Then we have deposit, which is the way how we deposit um, collateral. One thing to note is every interaction goes through the vault manager. So the uh, so an EOA or the DNFT holder never interacts with the vault uh, uh, vault directly, but goes through the goes through the vault manager. Uh, deposit function, we have a withdraw function to withdraw collateral, uh, mint diet to mint new diet, burn diet, uh, redeem diet against your collateral, and, uh, and the way to, to, liquidate, uh, to liquidate you. Um, then what is interesting is uh, the way we uh, calculate the collateralization ratio. So we have uh, two functions. Um, in order to, to determine the USD value of, uh, of your position, which is one for, for non kerosene vaults. <coughs> Excuse me. So here we iterate over, uh, over all your non kerosene vaults and determine the USD value. And then in the kerosene uh, value function, we do the same thing uh, for, uh, for kerosene vaults. Why do we need to do this? Because, uh, because of the following reason. So when you withdraw, um, when you withdraw collateral, for example, uh, this is a, let's look at the reverts. So the first revert happens if you, if you do a flash loan attack or you try to deposit and withdraw the same block. The same, uh, the, the other uh, revert happens if you have uh, if you don't have enough exogenous collateral, so we get the we get the value of the of the non kerosene vaults. We subtract the amount that you want to withdraw, and if that's less than diet minted, then uh, then we we revert, and uh, we do the same thing for. Uh, for the collateralization ratio. So if you're under our minimum collateralization ratio, which is 150%, we, we, basically, we basically revert. Okay. Um, then we have, uh, we have the, let's look at the, 
this is why we have the, the non-caching block. We have to check the same check if you want to mint new mint more dias. So we check okay is the is the new diet minted uh, less than the uh, than the uh, non kerosene value if that's the case we revert we we have this double check just to make sure that you don't just uh, deposit kerosene and don't have any exogenous collateral so we have this double check of non kerosene value and uh, and uh, and the co collateralization ratio. Um, okay, I think um, I think these is the, these are the main points. Um, so the the audit's gonna start soon. Um, I'm available async basically all the time. So if you have any questions, reach out to me on uh, on Discord. It's Shafu0x or on Twitter, Shafu0x as well, or Telegram, Shafu0x too. Um, if you, I think good things to look at is how to manipulate kerosene value in a way that would break the system. Uh, have a look at the, at the kerosene denominator. And, uh, and yeah, I'm going to put all the so you you can find most of these things already in the in the code arena uh, fork uh, all the uh, all the documentation uh, our website and stuff like that but i'm gonna put them in the in the video description down below all right then yeah good luck good luck with finding uh, finding bugs all right bye bye